Good morning, afternoon, depending on where you're at. Uh, so today, should I start a real estate team? Yes, yes. I did a little mini uh, live on this the other day uh, because it's a question that a lot of people ask, and um, I think they're going to continue to ask it. And like we had spoke prior to picking this topic, if you're asking that question, then it means you're pretty much already there. You're starting a team. It's just you're lacking in uh, uh, vision, structure, right? Like the, 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 the actual things to implement in order to do it. And let me just say this, because if I had a uh, real estate team member who was maybe watching something like this, I might be concerned. Like, man, I don't want them to start a team, right? Like they're on my team. Uh, there are people that don't want to start a team. They're quite comfortable on a good high producing real estate team uh, uh, that they make a lot of money and they know their role and they're very happy with that. But if you're a team leader and you have an agent that's considering this. What I want to tell you is um, you need to create more opportunity instead of have a limited uh, uh, scarcity mindset. Now, I had a scarcity mindset and I lost good people because of it. And, you know, in retrospect, like thinking differently, I wish I would have had a different mindset. Like, how can I create a situation where they could start a team and we could still work together? And, you know, they can have some of the things that they desire, uh, um, you know, and oftentimes it's just the, 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 a lot of times it's their name on the sign. It's the right condition. And so, you know, how, how, how can you do that? How can you create that situation? How can you create a win-win? How can you uncap, you know, the, the, the opportunity would be um, where I would direct you to go if this makes you uncomfortable and you're a team leader and you're like, crap, what if my team members are watching this, right? So maybe we'll do some topics on that. Uh, but I just wanted to address that because for me, like, I'd be like, oh, man, forget these guys. Like, what are they doing, right? I'm trying to tell my team members to start a team. Listen, uh, it's, it's, I think it's imperative to start a team. I think it's imperative to start a team that starts teams, that continues to spawn teams. Because, you know, there's always going to be enough, right? There's always going to be more than enough to go around. And every deal that you're not doing in your market, imagine if you could have some type of a, a situation where you were, it, it, you know, participating in that in some capacity with the team that you help start, right? Uh, uh, be pretty cool, especially if it was in the neighboring community, if you already had like massive, you know, um, amounts of market share. So um, as far as starting a team is concerned, all that aside, <laughs> should you start one? Yes. Uh, let's get into some of the tactics as far as what you should do first. Yes. And, and can I put out a disclaimer? If, mm -hmm. if the reason why you want to start a team is because you are, and this is no judgment, um, but you are a lazy person that just really wants to make money from other people selling real estate. Uh, and you have not been able to figure out how to do it yourself. Uh, predictably, please, you are not ready yet. <laughs> like, uh, should you? Yes, you should. But the reasons have to be dialed in. And I think we'll go over, you know, what those first steps need to be um, to be able to have success and not have this be a giant headache where I've seen so many people fail because they started it A, at the wrong time and B, for the wrong reasons. You know, they weren't trying to scale their business. They were trying to make money without working, um, which like I get leverage and I get the benefits of being able to go on vacation and, and make money while you're on vacation or while you're at home or while you're sleeping. Like I get that, but that can't be the driving reason why, because you are inherently at the, at the, at the wrong time of your business, I think. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I, mean? you know, I think that, I think that honestly, uh, the reason why I started a team was because I wanted more money. So that's fine, right? Like that's a good good thing to do. Great reason. Uh, uh, but, but it was also, uh, you know, to make an impact, right? And to have the ability to multiply myself through others in a way that, that benefited them, right? It wasn't completely uh, uh, parasitic. It was more symbiotic, right? I was like, man, how can I do this in a way that's a win-win, right? How can I do this in a way that will allow us to scale and hunt? and grow together. My analogy was like, man, if we were cavemen and we were hunting a woolly mammoth, it'd be a lot easier to have like 15 of us, you know, with spears than just one of us out there, right? Like the chances of us not dying and actually succeeding go up much greater and higher. And so I think that, you know, for me in business, Jake, I've always thought of the business that, that I was in, 
right? As like a collective, like we all subscribe to this collective in order for us to achieve our individual and collective goals. And it has to be, again, symbiotic, right? So, so you know, um, when I think of a business, like I never wanted to, to I never I never woke up and was like, I want to be the boss someday, right? It was always quite the opposite. And even to this day, I don't ever say, oh, this person works for me. I always say they work with me, no matter what capacity they're in, because I think that um, that's the truth. Like people, people, they choose where they're going to be. They choose where they're going to work. They choose who they're going to work with. Right. And so I think to begin, like you, if you want to be the leader of a real estate team, you have to be congruent in the type of person that you would follow. And I think that's one of the first places to start, right? Like what kind of a person would you align yourself with? And if you're not that person, then you're not quite ready, right? You have to become the person that you need to be in order to achieve what you want to achieve. And so what does that look like? Let's unpack that for a second. And I know we're on limited time because we started a bit late, but I think to begin with, right, you have to have a formula that generates business. You have to have a system in place that allows you to consistently bring in business. And I'm not going to give a plug for Market Maker, although we do that, right? There's a lot of ways to do that, right? Okay, a little back end plug, right? Okay. Although we do do, do do that. But but in all honesty, like you have to have a system in place that doesn't suck. If your system is cold calling and door knocking, right? Like if somebody were to come to you and say, hey, join my team and you can do this over here for less money, do you think you'd be ecstatic about doing that? No, right? Like you'd be like, hey, I'm doing that over here. It already sucks. And by the way, I get to keep, you know, 80% of my commission or 100% of my commission, whatever you got, right? So, so you have to have some value there. And the value generally is from having success and, and, and being in those trenches and being able to say, hey, I'm in the trenches here. Here's what I do. Here's how it works. And by the way, I can show you how to do it too. And if you look at your net income, not your gross, you should make more money doing this with me than you're currently making by yourself, keeping whatever percent of the commission. And here's how. And then you're able to break it down like a math equation, right? That's what you tell the guys when you bring them on to sell our product, right? Like your success is, is, is just a math equation. It's it's mathematic certainty. And, and how do you do that, right? Well, you have to start somewhere. And personally, I can't think through starting anywhere other than, uh, uh, you know, leads right attracting them to me so that when i call them i get to take the position of hey i'm just calling you back or hey uh, uh we got this appointment that you would set right so that i'm putting myself in a position of uh what what kind of like warren claff right pitch anything jay delusion he's froze yep. up i'm gonna keep going can you hear me yeah can warren you, claff, like, can you hear me? like like what, what what's it called like the the, the, the power thing like Oh, I've got 15 minutes. If they say that, you say back, I got 10, right? Like there yeah. are psychological, you know, b benefits to being in that position and, and using those type of tactics. And so when I'm dealing with a lead, that's my favorite one. Like, hey, Mike Oto here, just getting back with you. Uh, hey, Mike Oto here, we had an appointment at this time, right? Like putting myself in a position like like a doctor or an attorney, right? If you go into an attorney's office and you have a pre-scheduled consultation for 30 minutes, right? How do you think you're going to treat that attorney? You're going to treat him with a lot of respect as far as what he has to say because you know that this dude gets paid a lot of money or this gal gets paid a lot of money and right now you're not paying them. You know what I mean? So like they're being gracious with their time. So how do you put yourself in that position? So anyway, that's how I think through the beginning stages of building a team. You have to have some some, some things in place to, to attract business like that. Lead generation, for example, where people are raising their hand saying, hey, I'm over here. I'm looking to buy or sell some real estate in the near future. And then you have a system for converting those people. You have a system for working those leads, building a pipeline. And essentially, when you want to start a team, I mean, it's it should be, depending on your, 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 your I guess, just uh, ambition, right? When you don't have enough time to service another customer, that should be the time when you start to do that. Or if you start to transition into uh, working with buyers to only working with sellers, which we all know is a little difficult in this market, but it's still possible, right? So, so when you draw some lines in the sand, like, okay, I'm not going to take any more clients because I'm already at full capacity, or okay, I'm not going to take any more buyers, I'm going to focus on sellers, or even a line in the sand uh, uh, of, of geography, which really feels good, like I'm not going to take any clients past this area, or a line in the sand with, with price, right? Like, I'm not going to work with customers underneath this dollar amount. You can't do it in a jerk way, right? You just have to be like, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not the agent for you. I can help find them for you. Um, I don't service that, that that market, right? Like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, right. The 20,000 trailer park, that's, that's not my gig, right?
but but or whatever it is you know what i mean like i i first drew that line geographically jake and then i drew it with dollar amount right like okay i'm not going to do anything under a hundred thousand which average price range in my market was like two and a quarter at the time and, and i would make exceptions like if i was hungry and somebody had a house for like 80 grand i know it's so quick i'd be like all right i'm coming you know uh, uh i had the worst advice from a prominent maker he said let me tell you something about being a real he said what you want to do is you want to take all the change off the table in other words never deny any customer and that's just bad advice, right? Yeah. But when, how, how do you even do that? Well, you have to have a system in place that brings you more customers than you can service. That's how you do that, right? So I didn't start my team with this, right? I didn't start my team by drawing these lines. I started my team by having a family member in need. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I'm not hiring you. Not the most purposeful strategy. Go ahead. Hey, and it's it's uh, just the, the timing is, is key, right? And, and having those systems in place because this is this is the pain that most people feel when they first start a team, uh, usually out of situations like that where it's just like opportunity kind of fell in, its, in, in your lap. Like you talk to somebody new in the office and they asked you, right? And you're like, oh, I guess we I mean, you can start working with me type thing. And then you're like, oh, what do I do? How do I make them successful, right? And then all of your time goes into helping them and now you're going to, you talked about this, like you, you're trying to make them successful and you ultimately are, are kind of doing their business for them. So now you're getting paid half. You'll end up with a paid audience, right? Like that's the, that's the danger if you don't do this right. It's the same thing if you hire an assistant and you don't have a system in place of what they're going to do, or at least a list of tasks that you're going to take off your plate that are the lowest dollar producing activity tasks. You're just, you're hiring a paid assistant. If it takes you more time, Right? Not in the beginning when you're training them, but after they've been trained, to tell them what to do, then you just doing it yourself. That's just bad business. And exactly. I've been there, I've done that, I've done that. And I, I still do that sometimes. I'll be like, man, I gotta wait for this person to get off the phone so I can tell them to do that. I'm like, wait a minute, I just can do this myself right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, right. but you constantly have to think through those things, right? And, 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 and it gets in depth, uh, for example, um, you know, one of the things that you don't want to do if you if you have someone is feel like because you have them, you have to make this weird commitment to the point where, you know, uh, um, it's detrimental to you. Right. So like right. yesterday, for example, we got into a situation where we ran out of uh, uh, leads for our ISAs to call. Now, normal business here would be uh, uh, just leave them here anyway. And just pay them, you know what I mean? Even though their production has come to, you know what I mean, like on an individual basis, like, you know, maybe 10%, where if we cut a few of them, told them go home, right? The remaining ones would be like, you know, back to business as a normal efficiency. That's called a labor efficiency, you know? And if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you work it out back, if their dollar amount per hour goes you know, less uh, as far as people buying food than it normally is, and it's it's in tandem with the amount of employees they have, they start making cuts so that they keep the labor efficiency rate. Yep. And now I'm not saying you got to get into that much depth out of the gate, but I'm saying this is how you need to think about your business that you're considering, you know, kicking off in, 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 as far as real estate team is concerned. So, you right. know. And I, I love the fact that the term in the industry is team leader because that is what you have to be, right? Like you become a leader. So if, if you're thinking like you're just going to be able to hire some badasses that are just going to be able to be like conversion maniacs and are just going to like, those aren't the people that go and join teams, right? Like um, it, the only way you'll get someone like that is if you have a badass system in terms of being able to just get them business that they otherwise, like they're really good when they're face to face with people. And if they just could get in front of more people, they could close and they're actually telling the truth about that. Yeah. Right. And they're just not trying to figure out the whole marketing and getting consistent clients coming across their, their calendar each and every day. I saw a real estate coach recently and her, her ad said, um, uh, show me your calendar and I'll show you your paycheck. And uh, I was like, I like it. That is, no, a good, I, that is a good one. Yeah. So I built, I built, I built a team twice, right? After the recession, I had to rebuild my team. And it was interesting what I did the, the first time versus the second time. The first time I hired a buyer's agent first, right? And then I hired an assistant. Then I hired another buyer's agent, right? The second time I hired the assistant first. Then I hired the ISA to make the calls for us. Then I hired the buyer's agent, right? 
And I might, I might, I might have like a little revisionist history. I might have had an agent or two still. You know what I mean? But right, that wasn't my focus. You know what I'm saying? Like my focus was first the assistant, then the ISA, right? Because I had the leads coming in, so I had to have somebody set the appointments for me. And I know from experience that if I'm making those calls myself, like the people treat me differently than if I have someone make those calls and set those appointments. And also, it's less, it's less apologetic. Like if they ask to meet me at like eight or nine in the morning. For me to be like, oh, my schedule's not, the, the, you know, uh, in contrast with my ISA saying, well, Mike has time at 10 or 11, right? Like, because th- nothing really happened in real estate like the Ozarks before 930. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> not it's, it's, it's pretty slow paced there anyway, as far as the kind of lifestyle. Most people are hung over, to be honest, because it's a party spot. And so, you know, like I'd slide in the office about 9, 930, you know what I mean? Like to get my coffee, organize my desk two or three times. Nine. Okay. You having some revisionist history again? Probably, probably, probably 10 days. <laughs> just, just like now, right? Like, I like butts in the morning, bro. I get up, I read the Bible, right? I read the proverb of the day. Like, a lot of people probably don't know that. And then, and then, and then I'll, I'll watch a, a, a video on uh, uh, whatever it is I'm trying to tackle, like some type of coaching, you know what I mean? Whatever I'm involved in at the time. And then mm-hmm. I, I try to hit the gym. And so that's, that's, that's like my perfect morning if I can. Do those things, and unfortunately for me, I've never been like a five AM guy. You know, just just not quite how I'm wired. Right. Yeah. If you are, kudos to you. I mean, you get a lot more done faster. And, you know, maybe I could push myself, but I, I'm happy. That's it. Dinner last night. I was talking to a guy that, that he's a four forty five er. Hit the yeah. gym, you know, before the office at his desk. You know, seven fifteen, seven thirty. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, and uh, we are we are similar in that manner. It's five a.m. The other day, if I would join five a.m. club with him, he's like, everything in your life will become exponentially better. I was like, you know what? He might not be wrong, uh, but I'm gonna have to cons- like meditate on this for a minute before I pull the trigger to commit. Because when I commit, like I commit, you know, I don't want to come half stepping. And so, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, I'm just getting back into the swing of five days a week in the gym as it is. Like, I don't want to overdo it burn myself out and then not get nothing done, right? Success and right. habits are compounding. You know what I mean? And so like you want to build a foundation and that's that that's all I'm saying with if you're gonna start a team, you gotta build a foundation of really a system in place that allows you to generate business, right? Before you start to build the blocks on top of that. And what Jake is saying is if you go the opposite route and you try to build the blocks on first and just hire an agent, right? Your likelihood of success partner is gonna be nil. I mean it's gonna be very, very low. I, I think that when I did that, I already had the system in place as far as leads and the lead gen were concerned. I already had a database in place. I had, I can't remember if it was, uh, uh, if she had come before or after I would hired him. I think it was almost at the same time, but it was like my first assistant, a friend that I knew, right? Like I was really, you know, strategic in hiring. I was like, hey, will you help me with this stuff? You know, you know? What do you do? You're right? Yeah. Well, she knew what I did. Uh, uh, Brittany, Brittany Parker. It, 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 like I remember I had like a spare bedroom in my house and I was doing most of the work there instead of at the office because I didn't want anybody to know like what I was cooking up, you know, I was like so fearful of somebody stealing, you know, uh, 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 the plan, the ideas, the things that I was trying to do, you know, I just said like, and, and, and nowadays I'd be like, good luck, here's a playbook, like, go ahead and try, you know. <laughs> it's not good easy. luck, right? Yeah. Let's we'll see at the finish line if you can make it. Yeah, it's like the other day I was listening to this uh, podcast and was talking about making cookies and how they forgot the baking soda. Oh, they ran out of baking soda. He was like, I didn't think it'd be any big deal. He's like, it's just a little teaspoon and then chocolate chip cookies. He said, but the cookies came out flat. It did not taste good at all. And he was like, who would have thought? Like such a little teeny thing would be such a crucial ingredient. And it's the same thing with this. That's why we're trying to make sure that you understand, like, really, I'm just going to keep saying it over and over again. You start with the foundation. Right, you start with foundation right. of getting yourself a, a, a system in place that generates consistency for you. If you do anything other than that first, right? Like you don't need an assistant if you don't have that in place. If you don't have that in place, you don't need a, 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 an ISA because who are they going to call? You know what I mean? Right. You don't need a buyer's agent. Who are they going to service? They're just going to take business from you, like Jake said. Help them do it and get paid half the money. You know, and and. and that's it. I mean, there's really not a whole lot more to say about it than that. Other than you need to have a system that generates the leads, a system that you have when the leads are generated, 
consistency in your conversion metric. And I don't care if it sucks. I don't care if it's a half a percent of every lead that you generate that you're able to convert. Good for you. Now you got a system. Now you can start optimizing the system, right? Maybe it is time. Maybe you should hire somebody at that point so you can have more time to increase that conversion rate, which is a good plan, right? Yep. And and it's it's the building blocks in in you know like the 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 um, actual title of this like should I start it? You know, it like ultimately if you want like we've talked about this a lot in the past of. Uh, building a business for you than you do for it. Like, yeah, if, you, if you want harder. that, right? Yeah, like if you if you if you do want that, like you you should, but you just have to know getting into it what you need to be successful, so it's not the exact opposite of what you wanted, right? Where it's a business that you work harder for uh, than it does for you. You know, you don't want to flip those, and it's 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 going to it's going to happen where it just flips, but it's it's all about the systems you have in place. All about the system. System to train new people, system to hire new people, system to to uh, produce the results that you're doing and turn it up and down like a water faucet. Those things, once you nail them, oh man, managing it is just managing it to the number. It makes the, the, the people aspect so much easier. And it's just, it, it creates a fun environment that you can set goals and celebrate Break. Like I saw um, uh, Kyle Whistle it took his whole team to Cabo because they hit some astronomical number. Um, so he took his whole team to Cabo for four days. Like there's there's teams out there that have figured it out, that have dialed it in, that like become family type places, which is a really cool thing to look back at and see like, oh, man, it's all started with a little idea in my head. And now this family's better off. This family's better off. This family's better off. Like everybody likes coming to work. They all enjoy it. Like it, that is such a good feeling um, that I don't think people always take into consideration. But when you're in the middle of it, you see, right? And you see the impact and the ripple effect that's happening. And you're like, oh, wow, that was, that was cool. That was just a little idea in my head. And then some some hard work and execution and bada bing, bada boom. Like, what we got? Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot. It's a journey, right? Like, you know, for example, the systems that you need to have in place, right, uh, 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 of, of management or of accountability, right? But like, if you're, if you're going to spend money on generating leads for a buyer's agent, for example, let's say that you've got a budget for that person of, let's say, 500 extra dollars a month, right? So you're committed to spend $500 a month for them, right? And so let's say that translates, like, if you're a market maker into about 100 leads a month, right? What, what are they going to commit back to you for that? Okay, and, and, and how do you keep them accountable to committing back to you for that, right? Like for me, what I would have is we would have a Monday morning meeting every Monday and we would go over all the numbers collectively, which we do here at Market Maker, we do the same thing. We just do it every day. It's called Morning Huddle and it's quite nice. I mean, we, we, we run through a, a positive focus, something they're positive on uh, about. Uh, then we go through the numbers as far as uh, uh, each person in the department, they're called KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. and then. Uh, we go to work and it takes what 15 20 minutes, right? Like, I did those for years and now I don't come to those anymore, right? Pat runs the meeting and I come in at 10, which is delightful, right? Uh, uh, uh but for years, like, I, to get that to get that momentum and that snowball rolling, like, I did that personally for years and years and years and years. And years. <laughs> I mean, like, over a decade, right? Mm. Yeah, now I'm, I'm a distraction. And so I'm just like, I'm not going to distract because I, I love it. I love people. I make a bunch of dumb jokes, you know, so I'll be overly talkative and, and I'll kind of derail the thing. And so I think everybody likes me not being there more than they like me being there. Besides, <laughs> we've got enough you know, uh, 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 meetings throughout the week where we're, 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 we're touching base with each other. Uh, Anytime you're in those meetings, the positive focus is like, man, I got so much done yesterday. It was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, funny, it's funny to see the the change in answers. Right, right. But I mean, you know, that's just one one little system, right? So, I, I, what started with me was uh, learning about Michael Dell. Don't know if it's true or not. Just heard this story that he built Dell computers conceptually in his dorm room by thinking through the process and building all the business systems from when it was a you know as a massive business, and then reverse engineering it back to where he was actually at in his dorm room. Right. So then. You know, what's the next step from there? What do I need to do from there? Who's the next hire? Where do I get the product? How do I build the product? What does that look like next? What does that look like? Like reverse engineering it. And so when we start with this, like when we talk to somebody about, for example, uh, uh, getting on Market Maker, what's the first question we ask them, 
or one of the first questions we ask him? Jake? There's a lot of questions we ask him. Well, we ask him what their goal is. Oh yeah. So can, Reverse in here. Your back, right? Because you, when I'm talking to somebody on the phone and they're popcorn all over the place, and I want to do this, I want to do that. I'm like, all right, what's the goal of why you're wanting to do that? Like, I just hung up with a, a friend and a customer, and and they were like, hey, I want to do this, I want to do that, and I'm like, but why? They're like, well, because I want to do this. I'm like, well, there's a lot of ways that you can get there. You know what I mean? Like, and do that. But what are you specifically trying to accomplish? And finally, I got to the bottom of it. I was like, okay, I'll just do what you want. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna innovate any more than that. We'll start with that. Let's get that done, and then we'll move right. on to the next. How to expand it, right? And so, uh, um, you know, I just think, I think from a, a should we start a team standpoint, got to be with the end in mind. What do you want to do? How much money do you want to make? How much money do you want your agents to make? How much volume do you want to do? What number in your uh, 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 real estate market do you want to be? Do you want to be number one? Do you want to be in the top 10? Like any of those are fine, right? Do you want to be in the top 20? It depends on your market and how much money is there, right? Like in some markets, I'd be just fine being number 20. <laughs> right. Great, yeah. So you want to start with that, right? For me, like I was ambitious and big ego. I'm like, I want to be number one. I remember I literally crossed the name of the number one agent out on the sheet and wrote my name on top and I put it on my mirror to look at every day and every night, you know. Uh, uh, um, but but it, you have to you have to start with that. What is it yeah. you want to accomplish first? And then you want to think through the people that you want to attract and how you want to impact them and what their life will be like and how you'll make a positive impact on them, right? Like how you, for example, if you got somebody that you know that's in the real estate business that's struggling, if you were able to take them by the hand, help them, get them to six figures a year, right, in their pocket, like how would you make that, how would that make you feel, right? It'd make you feel pretty good. And if it doesn't, then you might not want to do this because that's a big part of it, right? It's, it's, it's about helping others. Um, and don't dilute yourself. It's about the money too, and that's fine. You know what I mean? Like, don't pretend like it's not. That, that's just inaccurate thinking. Uh, uh, but, you know, those are the things that you have to think about. And as far as step one, step one has to begin with you. You have to become the person that you need to become in order to have somebody want to, you know, follow you. And in order to do that, following you is almost agent attraction. Like, how do you recruit somebody? Well, the way that you recruit somebody is by having benefits that other companies don't. And, you know, big box brokerages, like, I don't know any of them that have a system that they pay for and pay for your leads and teach you how to generate income with those leads. Right. Currently, I don't think that there's one out there. So that's the benefit for you. And if you haven't figured that out for yourself yet, that's step one. Right. right. Agreed. And and the cool thing when you when we talked about put starting with the, the end in mind, you know what I mean? Like there's businesses that that's hard to do, right? Like Michael Dell, he had to make that all up in his head, right? Like he had to take like some things that were like, okay, this could kind of be similar to what this is, but it was like new category, right? Like not a whole lot of, maybe not know. new, but not, not a whole lot of companies that were like that, right? Not That's a whole lot of people visionaries, you know what I mean? Like, right. But, but yeah. the, the cool thing is in, in real estate, there's so many teams out there that you just have to pick which one you want to be like and be like, okay, there's the, there's the model. Yeah. And they're all basically the exact same, just FYI, right? Yep. I mean, ninety percent of them are probably blueprints of each other. So That's because um, it works. When, you, when you get success, like there's there's systems, there's people who've done this before you, and they figure right. it out. Yeah, like I would I would I would run up the chain and, and and call those people all the time. You know what I mean? Like some of them would talk to me, some of them wouldn't. I'll never forget. There's one guy that wouldn't. Uh, man, I called him so many times. He was in Hawaii. His name's escaping me. And, and, and I could never get him on the phone. And I just wanted to know like a little bit about his business. So finally I got a hold of one of his ISAs and his ISA broke the entire thing down. He was like, well, here's what we do. And I was like, wow, are you sure you're not gonna get in trouble for telling me this? He's like, nah, he don't care. He's making so much money. He's like, he, he could care less. And I was like, okay. Well, you're not in Hawaii, you're fine. Yeah, pretty much. And that's the way it works too. You know, I mean, if you look at inside your market, which is where I started, right? I'm like, man, I wish I could. You know, be a fly on the wall of that team. But if you look outside your market, those people are pretty chatty, especially if you're asking them about their favorite topic, which is themselves. And especially if you're asking about their double favorite topic, which is the success that they've had with themselves. You know what I mean? And it's part of They can tell 100 people, maybe one might get somewhat close. You know what I mean? Like, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Like, because you can become so many different versions of yourself along the way. Like, 
And so most people get to a point and they're like, you know, this is, this is a pretty cush, cush life. You know what I mean? Like it's the super crazy ones that push past like a thousand deals. You know what I mean? Like those people are a special kind of crazy, I think, personally. You know what I mean? Like in their real estate business, they are just like, you know, they're out of production. They're 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 becoming like CEOs of multi-million dollar companies at that point, right? So like sometimes that's just fun, you know, and they got to learn how to become even more in-depth marketers and more in-depth leaders and uh, how to expand the markets and like those just become new challenges, which I guess is probably um, a good thing for those people. You know what I mean? Like once they've accomplished something, they set out a goal and they hit it. It's like, okay, what's the next one? It's not like, Hey, okay, let me go put my feet up on the desk. You know, the, 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 the you know what's so interesting about that? Like, huh. I, you know, you know, you're familiar with the, the Peter principle, right? Yep. Are you? Yeah, Pat taught it to me. He said basically, what you do is, is you 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 continue to uh, what's the word? Uh, elevate uh, when you elevate somebody in their position, you what? Promote them. Promote. You continue to promote somebody to the point of incompetence, right? Because like they were good at this job, so you promote them to like manager, for example, uh, because they demonstrated good abilities at you know in doing the work, but zero you know in in, in management in. in, in Maybe they do okay management, so then you promote them to something else to the point of where they're incompetent. They're outside of their depth, outside of their element. Right. And I've done that a number of times. And the most interesting thing to me is when I take somebody like you know that is in the trenches, that does really well in the trenches, and I put them in a position of authority. Like in their mind, their thought of authority is, oh well, now I don't have to do anything because that's what they thought that the previous manager was doing. They didn't see that you have to do twice as much work, right? Than when you were just in the trenches, just in the job that you were, you know, working in. Now you've got to make sure that all the trains are running on time. You've got more responsibility. You've got more time that you got to put in. And they don't know that. They don't see it. So I'll watch them. I'll put them in a position of management, you know, stupidly, at least in the past. And then, and then, and then they don't do squat. And I'm like, hey, what, what, why aren't you doing this? Oh, well, I told so-and-so to do it. Well, I didn't ask someone to do it. I asked you to do it. That's a manager's job. Like, you need to keep the metrics, right? Like, you can't just push your work off on everybody else and just sit there and sip coffee. Like, that's what they think is going to happen. Right. That's what you think is going to happen you start a real estate team. Woo! You've got a lot to learn. Because it's a long time from here to there, if there even ever actually happens. You, uh, you know, you should just have all the hats of your entire real estate business, and you should just have them color coded on your your desk, and you just gonna you know, be taking some off and putting them different ones on all day long. I think I think that that would be impactful if you were trying to figure out which dollar productive activities you could start to slice off to a, a an assistant. So I mean, like, look, just put one hat on. Anytime you're doing a, a dollar productive activity that's fifteen dollars an hour or less, put that sucker on. And I'll give you some examples, right? It'd be uh, uh, putting listening in the MLS, uploading videos, right? Like, uh, uh, I mean, even as far as uh, calling once a week your listings to give them an update on what's happening. All those things are duplicatable without you, without losing quality that you should be putting on somebody else. We'll get into that next time. Like, let's we're gonna keep talking about should you should you build a team uh, because. You know, to be quite honest, the people who want a team uh, already have a team are our best customers. So if we're talking about things that are relevant to them, then, you know, good for us. Absolutely. And it's going to be helpful. It's going to be fire. Is that what the, the young kids say nowadays? What's that? Fire? Fire. Oh, I, I, got way more. I asked Braden everything now. Oh, you do? Yeah. My brother's the same as Braden. He's got to school me up on stuff like. Yeah, I'm like, is it cool? Is it still cool to say stuff like this? Is this... I feel like I'm still cool because I, I still listen to hip hop, but it's not their hip hop. You know what I mean? <laughs> not the same. I don't think no. so. Not All right, guys, same. listen. We're gonna wrap up. If you'd like some help with step one, right through 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 a lot of the steps, to be quite honest, almost. Almost all. Go to marketingcrawl.com, watch a short video on how we generate buyer leads and seller leads for you. Then we nurture those leads in a way that uh, I'm screwing up the pitch, Jake. We nurture those leads in a way that elevates your status and authority in the mind of those leads and then ultimately deliver them to your calendar as an appointment. It is exclusive. It's one of zip code. Go to marketingcrawl.com and check it out. The uh, the string in your back must be a little broken today. Oh, you know, long weekend. Right? It's fair. So as we always say, Market Maker, you are always just one pre-position appointment away. Every day. Go get it. Boom.